Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you my favorite books that I've read in 2020 so far. So we are about halfway through the year now, which is crazy to think. I feel like this year has had so many major things happening. So it's a very, I feel like we're at a very pivotal point in history right now. Um, but nevertheless, despite everything that's been going on, I have been reading a lot and there's definitely been some standouts so far. It's probably some favorites in here as well. So lifelong favorites. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. So starting out, I first have Bitter Falls by Rachel Kane, and this is the fourth book in the Still House Lake series, and obviously because this is the fourth book, I can't really go into much detail, but it follows a woman who finds out that her husband is a notorious serial killer, and ever since then, her life has kind of fallen apart. People always assumed that she was somehow involved in these murders, even though she had no idea, even though she was acquitted, people still think she is somehow involved, was somehow involved with it. And essentially got away with it and so this kind of deals with the aftermath of that how she's assumed new identities with her and her children and they've been basically on the run from people that have been trying to kind of find her and her kids and that kind of deals with that um, I obviously don't want to spoil too much about the series but that's just a general synopsis but the first two books deal with the aftermath of her husband and the impact that it still has on her and her kids and then I feel like after the third one it took a really like different direction in the series which I thought it did a really good job with because after the second one I was like I don't know how like what else can they do with this series because it's very like I feel like they kind of summed it up very good but I really love the direction of this series this one was really suspenseful and it was just a lot of fun I really hate the kids though I like Connor is okay but Lanny is like the worst character ever and I just she just needs to get over herself and needs a reality check like she is the worst she was really especially annoying in this one but I was able to look past that because this one was super super suspenseful and I loved it it deals with like cults which are just totally creepy in my opinion and it was just a lot of fun Next I have A Cold Trial by Robert Dagoni and this is the 8th book in the Tracy Crosswhite series. Obviously I can't spoil too much about this but basically the general synopsis of this series it follows a detective named Tracy Crosswhite who is a homicide detective and she became a homicide detective because her sister went missing and was never found again. So that's basically her origin story but what I really like about this series in particular is that it deals a lot with cold cases. So this one deals with Tracy's hometown and it follows another girl who disappeared and was murdered um, and her body was found a couple days later around the time her sister went missing too so everyone assumed it was the same killer that took her sister Sarah but then some things are kind of being a little fishy when people that were originally tied to her 20 years ago some bad things happened to them and so it kind of reopens the case and makes people think that maybe they had the wrong killer and Tracy is tasked with finding that but this one was so much fun I like the mystery especially because it takes place in the past like the crime you are trying to piece together the history of it which I think is so fun and I think they do a really this author does a really good job at that and especially now Tracy's at a very kind of pinnacle point in her life as well I won't spoil it but I really love seeing how she balanced like work and personal life I thought that was really interesting and the ending in here was just so intense I did not see it coming it was just very well done and yeah, it was super good. So if you're looking for a crime series that's a little bit different than the cookie cutter ones, I highly recommend you check this series out. Next I have the Beartown series by Eric Backman, which includes Beartown and Us Against You. So the basically the premise of this series is that it follows a small town in Sweden called Beartown and they are very much a poor town, but the pride and glory, pride and glory, glory, glory of this town is their junior a hockey team and when their junior a hockey team finally makes it into the finals everyone in this town is super super excited but a couple days before the final game something happens between the star player and the manager's daughter and it kind of leaves the town divided on the events of this and what i really like about this writing like the this series in particular is how it deals with rape culture and how people choose sides and like how people respond to that I think was really interesting the first book deals with like the immediate like 
effect of that but then the second one deals with kind of like what after the dust settles like what happens to like like what happens like we always see like the immediate stuff that happens but like what happens in the long run um, I thought was very interesting and my favorite thing about this is the writing style it's very lyrical it's very kind of flowy the way I kind of see the writing style it's very similar to the in an um, to the like the book thief where it's told by a narrator who knows what happens to these characters down the road and I kind of see it as it's the spirit of this town jumping from different people that live there and their different stories and just like the web that a small town of people like their lives intersect I thought was really interesting and yeah it was just very beautifully written and I cannot recommend this series enough. Next I have Nine Elms by Robert Brizenda and this is his newest uh, crime series. So it follows Kate Marshall who 15 years ago ended up solving one of the biggest murder mysteries um, of the time of a notorious serial killer so but despite making basically like solving a massive crime the fallout of this was instrumental to her life and 15 years after the fact she's still putting the pieces of what happened afterwards together and like trying to put herself back together again she's very much struggling with PTSD drinking issues and all that but she is now a criminology professor and when she's approached by a family um, to kind of help find what happened to her daughter it kind of bears a kind of resemblance to the Nine Elms killings that she dealt with 15 years ago and it kind of goes off from there but I love this I've read the Erica Foster series which is his other series and I loved it and it's a very interesting development on this character Kate is such a complex character character who has her ghosts she has her demons and she's struggling with addiction and all this other stuff and like just seeing how she was kind of how working this case again and getting back into kind of redeeming herself really like it was very neat to watch and this was super intense just like the the narrations that were told from this serial killer's perspective were also super creepy as well and this book was really fast paced I loved it and the ending was so crazy so if you're looking for actually a new crime series this one only has one book out right now so you could be caught up really really quickly but I really love his writing styles and his crime series so I cannot recommend them enough Next I have House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass, and I understand I'm going to preface this by saying I acknowledge and I was aware when reading this the problematic aspects in here and all that so this one wasn't my favorite like I feel like it has a lot of the problematic aspects that Sarah J Mass just incorporates into her writing and and I didn't like these characters as much as I did like I felt like I like I would not like Bryce as a person like I feel like if I knew her I wouldn't like her like the main character I just did not like I felt like she was just kind of the stereotypical like kind of party girl um, which I didn't like but nevertheless I still really liked kind of the overarching storyline in here and just this world it's very much a it's basically like Zootopia but if Zootopia was based in Sarah J Mass's world if that makes sense but I really loved it it was just a good distraction like me and my friend buddy read this and it was right when they were issuing like the shelter in place quarantine orders so it was a good distraction for both of us I feel like and it also provided us with like a social virtual outing as well so I like I really enjoyed this so um, it's like I said it's problematic it, like the characters I'm not a big fan of but it's just a very interesting world and it did end on like a very big cliffhanger so um, I probably will continue with the series like it's just like you know like it's like you know it's not good for you but you still like eat it anyways like this is how this book is like it's not the best book in the world but it's just like you just enjoy it while you have it 
And lastly, I have Lost Roses by Martha Hall Kelly, and this is the sequel to Lilac Girls. So Lilac Girls took place in World War II following Caroline. This time around, it follows Caroline's mother, Eliza, during World War I. And what I really liked about this is that it dealt, it also had like the multi-narrative storyline. So we follow Eliza, we follow Eliza's friend Sophia, who is part of the Russian royalty kind of family line. And then we also follow Varinka, who is a kind of a peasant in Russia. And basically how all their stories intertwine. Um, Sophia and Eliza are very good friends and when Eliza goes back, or sorry, when Sophia goes back to Russia, it's basically not only does World War II kind of happen, but also the Russian Revolution and it leaves kind of Eliza's or leaves Sophia's world completely turned upside down and she kind of goes off from there. But I love this. I really loved seeing these women's perspectives and narratives from basically all walks of kind of World War One. It deals more with the Russian Revolution side to World War One, but it's also kind of going on concurrently so it is addressed in there but I really love the Russian Revolution setting. I remember being totally fascinated by it in school and I never really read a lot of World War like historical fiction books about it and that's kind of like sparked my interest in kind of reading more about that era because it is so interesting especially with like the royals and everything that happened there. So I love this series like if you're looking for something that is like you get totally attached to the characters. Martha Hall Kelly's writing style, there's something very um, just totally like sucks you in with her writing and I think that makes it very very unique and stands out in my opinion. So I love it. Like if like I think like the first one World War II, this one World War One, and then the next one follows Eliza's mother during the Civil War. So we get like all eras of it, but I like how it showcases the women's effort during the war and the impact, like what they did at home, I thought was really interesting as well. So that's it guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what some of your favorite books have been so far this year and all of that fun stuff. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.